before we get into it, I just want to let you know you can now support us on Patreon. And a big shout out to our first two Patreons, Manny Mata and Stephen Downey. You guys are awesome. So today's video, I want to touch on the history of deck building within Commander. We've recently had a new set of pre-con decks that by now I'm sure most of you have had a chance to play. And like most of the pre-cons, one of the parts that could use the most improvement were the mana bases. So I wanted to take a look at the history of Commander decks. And way back when they first started building these decks, what kind of mana bases did they have? And how good were the decks? So with that goal in mind, I decided to compare three different decks. One that I built called Old School Grixis. And I had this deck vetted by some seasoned players within the Commander community. One that was submitted by a very good friend of mine, Keith, who has played Commander for quite a long time. And then one that I modified with my son using the new Commander decks that were just released. So with that, let's take a look at what I was able to create and let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on all of these decks. So we're gonna start with the old school Grixis deck that I built. Back when this format was started, all of the commanders were the original Elder Dragons from the Legends set. So we're using Nicol Bolas, two, two blue, two black, two red, for a legendary creature Elder Dragon with flying at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Nicol Bolas unless you pay blue, black, red. Whenever Nicol Bolas deals damage to an opponent, that player discards his or her hand, and it is a 7-7. Seven, seven. This being our Grixis control deck, our goal is to control the board until we can generate infinite mana using power artifact and basalt monolith or similar combo to take our enemies out using one of the many X spells that we have. And if all else fails, we just beat face with our 7-7 commander. So like with most of my decks, we're going to start off with the most important part, which is the ramp. Now back then, ramp was few and far between. There was no cultivates or anything to that effect. So we're going to use Felware Stone, Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Basalt Monolith, and of course, Dark Ritual. We will also be using Soul Grail, Astrolab, Thawing Glaciers, Suchi, as well as Apprentice Wizard. Now on to the creature package. Being a control deck, all of our creatures are going to have utilities attached to them, like Gwendolyn de Corsi, Sulkinar the Swamp King, Mahatma Jin, Vesuvian Doppelganger, and Clone, as well as Pit Trap, Magus of the Unseen, Tetsu Umazawa, Will of the Wisp, and Royal Assassins. Along with our creature package, we're going to use cards like Serrated Arrows, Icy Manipulator, and the awesome named Rocket Launcher to control our enemies. We will also have Arena of the Ancients, Mind Twist, Shatter, as well as the criminally underplayed Darkness, Nevenroll's Disc, and Ashes to Ashes to help control the board and our opponents. So some more of our control spells as well as finishers is, of course, we have Lightning Bolt, because what red deck doesn't play that? Fireball and Earthquake are two of our possible finishers, as well as Terror to get rid of the pesky creatures. We're going to use Fork whenever we can, as well as Unsummon to bounce our opponent's creatures back. Meek Stone will help make sure that our opponent's creatures can't attack us and don't untap. Red Elemental Blast to stop those pesky blue spells. And of course, the classic counter spell for two blue. We also have Force of Will, Arcane Denial, and Boomerang for control package. So for card advantage, we have quite a few options. Wheel of Fortune, Jaden A. Tome, Howling Mind, and of course Brain Geyser, which can also double as a win con as we can make our opponents draw their library. We have Mystic Remora, which no one ever pays the four. 
We have Memory Lapse, Recall, and Ashes to Ashes. We also have Brainstorm, Portent, and Winds of Change. So we have some awesome reanimation within our color scheme. Cards like Dance of the Dead, Animate Dead. We can also take our opponent's creatures with Control Magic or Copy Artifact if we like what they have. Limb Duel's Vault will allow us to search through our deck to get the cards that we need. We have Transmute Artifact to go get the artifact that we need. Power Artifact, which is part of our combo to win the game. And Reconstitution to get our artifacts that we need back from the graveyard. Now on to our lands. There were still some very powerful lands back then. Like Urborg. The Tabernacle of Pendril Vale and Hammerhine. Maze of Ith keeps our opponents from attacking us. Underground River for color fixing and Castle Sangir. Island of Walla Walk, Strip Mine and Mishra's Factory are all great lands. Thawing Glaciers, Diamond Valley for some life gain, and City of Brass to get the colors that we need when we need them. Of course, we have our basics, Mountain, Island, and Swamp. And of course, one of the advantages of playing when they first came out are the dual lands, the Volcanic Island, Underground Sea, and Badlands, which back then didn't cost anywhere near as much as they do now. With this deck being a Grixis control deck, we are looking to control the board until the time is perfect to spring the trap, and with Power Artifact and Basalt Monolith, create infinite mana, and either mill our opponents out with Brain Geyser, or take out the table with one of our X damage spells. Now we're going to move forward a little bit in time to a deck submitted by a good friend of mine, Keith, his Hannah Ships Navigator deck, where our Grixis Control deck may have a hard time at some of the tables that we have now. I believe this deck could hang with just about anything that's brought out on any casual commander table today. Our commander, Hannah Ships Navigator, is three mana, one blue and a white, for a 1-2 Legendary Creature Human Artificer. That reads, 1 blue and white tap to return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. This deck uses some fun interactions to control the board, and then when the time is right, closes the trap on your opponents. So we're going to start with the creatures, like Devout Lightcaster, King Crab, and Plume Veil. All creatures we can use to protect ourselves and our board. Wall of Denial, Melee Spirit, Haze Rider Drake, Crusading Knight, Northern Paladin, and Karmic Guide. More creatures to help us control the board and get creatures back from our graveyard. Obsidian Acolyte, a Chroma Angel of Wrath as a finisher, Light Wielder Paladin. Angry Mob, Oriok Champion, and Crimson Acolyte. Abbey Gargoyles, Order of Leetbur, and Knights of Thorn. Ivory Guardians, Order of the White Shield, and Exorcist for removal. Even Smoke Weaver, Thermal Glider, and Disciple of Grace. Dusk Rider Paragon, Stern Judge, and Major Tarot. Using these creatures to help control the board and attack when we can. With our commander on the board, we don't care if our graveyard is filled with enchantments or artifacts, because we can get them back. So we use artifacts and enchantments, like Drought, Justice, and Light of Day, to make sure that we don't get attacked. Teferi's Care, Aronson's Aura, and Chill. Soothsang, Karma, and Swirl the Mists, which allow us to have some fun color shenanigans. Of course, our Enchantment Karma is a really cool little combination with a certain land called Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth. Mystic Remora for card draw. Manangara's Equity and Royal Decree. Opal Guardian. Rune of Protection Green. Rune of Protection Black. Douse. 
Rune of Protection Red and White. Having all of the runes are great because if we're not facing those colors, we can cycle them for card draw. Under our instants and sorceries, we have a lay, mind bend, and magical hack, which again we can use that to change the color of our opponent's permanence. Crystal spray, spectral shift, and glamour die. Again, able to change all of our opponent's permanence. Alter reality, alter reality, and whim of Volrath. For searching, we use Mystical Tutor to get the spells that we need when we need them. Our land base is pretty simple. We have Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth for some karma shenanigans, as well as islands and plains. As you can see with the card pool from this deck, it's fun to play, and it's fun to play against. Able to change the color of your opponent's permanence, so they never know what they can attack with or when. On to our final deck in this history lesson. We have the Precon of Otrimi Ever Playful. Now, when my son and I decided to build this deck, knowing full well how complicated this mutate mechanic is, we decided to go a different route. His idea was to use hexproof creatures, when possible, to basically create almost a Bogles-like commander deck. So our commander is Otrimi the Ever Playful, three black, green, blue for a legendary creature, Nightmare Beast, that has mutate one black, green, blue, trample six, six, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, return target creature card with mutate from your graveyard to your hand. Now it can be argued that Brokos might be a better commander, but we stuck with this because this is what came in the pre-con. Now, being as we're in green, we have some of the best mana ramp in this in the game, like Rampant Growth, Sky Shard Claim, and Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, and Hour of Promise. Arcane Signet, Chromatic Lantern, Soul Ring, and the new Manascape Refractor, which gives us extra uses of our lands. Throw in Commander Sphere, Mind Stone, and if you have it, Mana Crypt. Let's get down to the fun stuff, all of our mutate creatures. Most of these creatures were in the pre-con, as I wanted to keep this relatively easy to put together. We have cards like Chittering Harvester, Dirge Bat, Crystalline Giant, and Sawtusk Demolisher. Brokos, Apex of Forever, which could be our stand-in commander. Mind Leecher, Souvenir Snatcher, and Trumpeting Gnar. Boneyard Lurker, Migratory Great Horn, Auspicious Sterix, Glowstone Recluse. Dreamtail Huron, Cavern Whisperer, Polywog Symbiote, and Archipelago. Insatiable Hemorrhage, Pouncing Shore Shark, and Sea Dasher Octopus. Now on to our utility creatures. We have River Sneak and Slippery Bogle for our Hexproof and Unblockable. Beast Whisperer, Gore Claw, and Acidic Slime. Snapcaster Mage, Solemn Simulacrum, and Muldrotha the Grave Tide to get our creatures back from the graveyard. Eternal Witness, Secure Tribe Elder, Acidic Slime, and Silent Arbiter. If we are attacking with only one creature, so should everyone else. Now to help our creature package out, we're going to use a couple Planeswalkers. Ashiok Dream Render to take care of graveyards. And Vivian Monsters Advocate because it is just a great source of card advantage. So for interaction, we're going to use the always faithful Beast Within and Kroos and Grip. As well as Gaze of Granite to selectively wipe the board. And that great deadly relic, which in my opinion doesn't get nearly as much respect as the Fierce Guardianship or the Red Commander spell. Now I'm not a big fan of tutors in my commander decks because I like a certain amount of surprise with my decks. But Mythos of Brokos works really well with our commander. It allows us to put cards directly into our graveyard. So whether we use Brokos to put them onto the field or a Trimi to put them into our hand, it synergizes great with our commander. So some more staples that we're going to use, like Zendikar Resurgent, because why not have double mana, as well as card draw. Some control spells, like Cyclonic Rift, Narset's Reversal, as well as Profane Command, which is a great modal spell. And card draw in Lifecrafter's Bestiary, as well as Rickshar's Expertise, because drawing six cards and playing a five mana spell for free is, is a pretty good value. While we are not a control deck, we do need to protect our creatures. So cards like Counterspell, Arcane Denial, Void Slime, 
in asceticism, make sure that when we don't have our bogle on the field, we can still protect it. Veil of Summer Heroic Intervention and Wrap in Vigor are three more ways to give our creatures indestructible. Our mana base is pretty simple along with any basic lands or tri lands that you may end up having. We're going to use a pretty standard soul time mana base using these lands as well. Reliquary Tower is always handy, as well as Rogue's Passage, and of course, Field of the Dead. But Jukabog, Temple of the False God, and Tomb of Yogmoth, as well as Cabal Coffers, if you have it, are great ways to ramp. So there's the history lesson. We have three different decks from across Commander history. What are your thoughts? How well do you think the Grixis Control deck would hold up against your meta? What changes would you make to a Tremie? And who's ready to have fun with Keith's deck, Hannah Ship's Navigator? Please leave your comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this with your friends. Thank you for watching and have a great time slinging spells.